good evening to all of you i pray almighty to give strength and immunity to all of us amid this covid pandemic and i wish all of us will stay safe and stay healthy this evening we have assembled here for the prestigious professor bk ramaya memorial lecture which is 28th in series as a tradition and custom we will have a small inaugurations before the delivery of the lecture on behalf of indian geotechnical society bengaluru chapter i welcome professor anantarama swami the chairman department of civil engineering indian institute of science bangalore who is the chief guest i welcome you sir thank you i welcome professor jl shiv kumar babu who is the guest of honor who is also the president of indian geotechnical society and perhaps he is the host being the chapter member i welcome you sir thank you i welcome our speaker today dr psr narsim raju welcome dr raju sir i also welcome all the members of the chapter and several participants i see close to 100 participants joining here for this program so i just want to introduce and say a few words about professor bikaramaya memorial bikaramaya himself professor bikaramaya graduated in civil engineering from mysore university at university college of bangalore in march 1946 he obtained his masters in civil engineering at university of connecticut usa in 1956 and phd from purdue university in usa in 1951 perhaps he was one of the earliest phd the first in the country fourth in the asia and seventh in the world <laughs> professor bk ramaya served as a junior engineer from 1946 to 1949 as a lecturer in civil engineering department of civil engineering at university college of engineering bangalore between 1949 to 1954 he also served as the research assistant at university of connecticut usa during 1954 to 56 and xr fellow of purdue research foundations during 1956 to 59 and later on as a chief soil engineer during 1959 to 60 and then he joined as a reader in civil engineering at the university college of engineering which is currently uvc bangalore in 1960 and continued to serve as professor head of the department and later on <clears throat> as a principal from 1971 onwards professor bk ramaya introduced soil mechanics as a core elective for undergraduates at uvc and started the masters program in soil mechanics he also established one of the largest civil engineering department at uvc he established the soil mechanics and foundation engineering highway and airport pavement design highway and materials and experimental stress analysis but by, by photoelastic strain gauge and stress coat and model studies etc etc many of achievements to his credit he distinguished himself as a teacher and researcher many of our very senior mem members who are present today professor shrijan professor subarao who knew professor bk ramaya as a student or as a colleague has told that he had photographic memory professionally he was a member of many national and international societies and academic committees professor bk ramaya published more than 100 papers in india and abroad He has organized the fifth Asian Regional Conference in Bangalore. He has traveled worldwide during his service. He has received several awards from Bangalore University, Mysore University, and Institution of Engineers in India. He served as the president of Indian Geotechnical Society during 1977 to 79. Before that, he founded the Karnataka Geotechnical Center. and acted as its chairman since inception in 1963 today karnataka geotechnical center has been renamed as indian geotechnical society bengaluru chapter and our chapter remembers the gratitude the human service of our founding father of the bangalore university 
and arranged these memorial lectures in 1992. The first lecture was delivered in 1993. I was also deeply humbled where the chapter extended the honor for me to be the recipient of this prestigious memorial lecture. Today, we have Dr. PSR Nasim Raju delivering this prestigious memorial lecture, which is 28th in series. So now I request our colleague, Professor Vijendra, to introduce the speaker. Over to you, Vijendra. Professor Vijendra? He is not there, it seems, in the list. Professor Ramesh, can you please read? Vijendra? He is not there, sir. He is not there, maybe he is. Maybe there. disconnected or. Can you call him? Can I have his number? Yeah, yeah, I'll just call him, sir. I'll call him, sir. So, maybe there's some logistic issue. So, I request all the participants to be kindly be patient for a few seconds. Parsad, if somebody has details, they can proceed. You have his uh, pamphlet, that pamphlet, what he has done, he has read out from there, right? Professor, Professor Babu knows about him. Ramesh, sir, I think uh, there's some logistic. Can you please uh, introduce uh, Dr. Nasim Raju? The daughter is there, with you? Yeah. Uh, shall I introduce our yeah, professor? Yeah, yeah, please. Babu? No, you I think go ahead. Professor, professor Ramesh, Ramesh, please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Please, uh, Ramesh, sir. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. See, professor Nasim Raju completed his PhD from Indian Institute of Science in the year 1989 under the guidance of Professor T.S. Nagraj. Yes. And after that, he joined uh, uh, the uh, consultancy organization. And then uh, he worked as a geotech consultant. He is having uh, good exposure in the field, uh, right from the boring, the you know the field test like plate load test and advanced testing, and also he has reviewed hundreds yeah. of reports uh, of uh, different uh, uh, companies, uh, major and minor companies, and also the power plants, etc. And uh, now director of the newly formed company. And he is the head of the geotechnical engineering. And he has uh, published few papers to his credit. And he is uh, uh, offering uh, the consulting services and uh, writing reports and also the advice. 
and many companies and uh, today he is going to deliver his lecture uh, based on his experience whatever he is going to present today it is only of his experience so all of us uh, will uh, listen to him and uh, uh, will understand the, the depth of uh, knowledge he has in the field so thank you very much i welcome you sir for this lecture uh, thank you professor ramesh now i call upon our chief guest professor anant rama sami to make his inaugural address over to you sir uh, good evening all of you and on behalf of uh, the civil engineering department at indian institute of science i welcome all of you to this uh, bk ramaya memorial lecture it would have been much better if we could have had it in person at gj hall but it's unfortunate that we are not in a position today to do that but in better times in future i would certainly extend a warm welcome to all of you to come and visit us in our department and engage with my colleagues and uh, improve the interaction that takes place uh, in the professional uh, domain so with this i would uh, like to uh, extend a warm welcome to our speaker and uh, over to all of you thank you so much thank you professor now i request professor jls babu who is the guest of honor just say a few words before we begin the lecture sir over to you sir unmute sir unmute your side yeah good evening to all of you i must say that um, it's ex extremely a very satisfying moment uh, that uh, dr narsimharaj is giving this uh, lecture uh, i i know him for a, a right from 1989 or 87 where and then has been continuous he did his masters and phd from ias and then has been in the field for quite some time i should also say that uh, you know it's a very proud moment for all of us that the professor b k ramaya memorial lecture is something that's very unique i you know the professor uh, i mean i was associated with his guide professor lenards in purdue university who was always proud of uh, professor bk ramaya's achievements and his work on time rate of consolidation and uh, quasi consolidation uh, pressure time dip, how how it develops and you know there were uh, the the you know even professor aljafal professor uh, linards they were very fascinated with the kind of dedication the insight that uh, he was having and uh, he was they were always appreciative of uh, bangalore uh society igs why because it's one of the oldest so societies and he visited um, the bangalore chapter uh, and um, it's uh, one of the this is a, this has been our tradition that uh, when we have this um, um, bang the bk professor bikram i remember lecture in a, in a, in honor of him we celebrate and honor an engineer so delighted to see that there are many participants in this program i welcome you all thank you very much thank you professor <clears throat> to all the participants uh, this is a very prestigious uh, event of bangalore chapter which is also very unprecedented this year every year we used to have at the end of march which we also planned this year but unfortunately to due to covid we had to postpone and now we are having this uh, lecture through this webinar and since this is a memorial lecture my humble request to all the participants there will not be any q and a session so kindly refrain from from posting any questions today sir so now i welcome uh, professor dr raju to share his screen and then we can continue the lecture dr raju kindly share the screen sir Sorry, I have disabled the host. Sharing option is not available. Uh, 
Yes, sir. Try now, sir. Please try now, sir. Go to the presentation mode, sir. To the first slide, sir. Yeah. Over to you, Dr. Raju. You can continue, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank the two Professor Ananta Ramaswamy, Chairman, Department of Civil Engineering, Indian Institute of Science, and uh, Professor G.L. Shivkumar Babu, President, Indian Geotechnical Society, uh, Dr. Parsarvi, Chairman, IGS, Bangalore Center, and Professor Ramesh for a nice introduction. Before starting the presentation, I would like to acknowledge my gratitude to my research supervisors late Professor T.S. Nagaraj and Professor N.S. Pandian at Indian Institute of Science. I am grateful to late Dr. C.S. Vishwanatha for providing me a wonderful opportunity to work with him for more than 25 years at Todd Steel and Civil Aid Techno Clinic Private Limited. I am thankful to IGS Bangalore Center for giving me the opportunity for delivering this prestigious B.K. Ramaya Memorial Lecture. Now, uh, uh, this uh, topic of presentation now is uh, the geotechnical properties in hard ground conditions. Video is not on, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So the uh, the presentation uh, uh, will follow like this with a brief introduction about the topic of presentation and about Bangalore uh, the stratification and the field investigations and uh, the correlations of the properties and uh, uh, how to recommend the foundation system based on the correlated properties and. Uh, concluding remarks will be made. This is only not a lecture of uh, this is only uh, whatever we are following in the hard ground conditions in Bangalore whenever we met with uh, I, am, I, I am sharing my experiences and what I follow just I am presenting here in this lecture. Yeah. So the uh, uh, the uh, the everybody know that this is uh, uh, the every geotechnical engineer. The objective of geotechnical investigation is to to determine the stratigraphy uh, uh, and the relevant soil properties and uh, to from these uh, properties we have to design a safe economic safe and economical foundation system. Uh, detailed specifications for geotechnical investigations are available in our Indian standards. So mainly IS 1892 and IS 2720. Uh, coming to the practice, it is uh, very widely varying in terms of field investigations. So the most primitive to fairly sophisticated equipments are, are in use. 
uh, in India. Similarly, in the laboratory testing, also the practices uh, uh, widely vary, and there are little standardization and degradation so far. It's a great privilege for me to associate it with various geotechnical consult services for various projects in Karnataka for over 25 years. So mainly the notable ones are the Bangalore Metro Rail project and several high-rise buildings in Bangalore and various infrastructure projects in Karnataka. As the subject is very vast, uh, I have limited my presentation to geotechnical practices in hard ground conditions. The reason for choosing this topic is in Bangalore, the soil is residual in nature and the stratification in general consists of uh, the overburden soil of varying thicknesses followed by dense to very dense silty sand or sandy silt underlined by weathered and hard rock. If you take the Bangalore stratification, the, the, the overburden uh, soil varies, depends on the uh, location. And uh, the, finally, the strata will follow in a, uh, the systematically, the strata will be encountered. The overburden soil varies and it will be followed by uh, majority of the places, the uh, disintegrated rock at the various places of the species of weathering, followed by hard rock. And the water table also, we will get at some isolated places, because since the water table in Bangalore is at very deeper layers, but uh, in some places, the, we met with water table at shallow depths because of uh, local source and near to lake beds. So Bangalore full of lakes and it depends on the terrain, we will get the water table. And it's not a truly real groundwater table, it's a patched water table and which can be pumped out and it is a controllable water table. So as I have chosen the topic of presentation, mainly geotechnical practices in hard ground conditions, I, uh, I need to explain a bit about uh, the, the why it is hard ground conditions is uh, different from a regular soil investigation. In geotechnical engineering practice, stratigraphy will be arrived making boreholes of required depths using appropriate equipment, which are all aware of it. The carrying out field test at different intervals during advancing the borehole, and uh, uh, while collecting uh, the while carrying out the test, we used to collect disturbed samples and undisturbed sample data will change in strata and carry out the laboratory test. Coming to the laboratory test, we, we, we carry out all our classification tests on disturbed and undisturbed samples and, uh, and uh, to arrive at the constituents engineering properties. The engineering properties mainly includes uh, shear strength, volume change behavior and coefficient of variability of soil. Based on the stratigraphy, these properties of the soil, geotechnical analysis will be carried out to arrive at the appropriate foundation system and recommending allowable bearing pressure, depth of foundation for in the case of open foundations. In the case of deep foundations, so length, diameter, and load carrying capacity of the pile foundations based on mainly laboratory testing. So in case of hard ground conditions, the, the difference is it is difficult to get truly undisturbed sample and hence the laboratory test could not be carried out because when the strata is dense, suppose if you consider the relative density of the soil, if it is a dense uh, to very dense in that conditions, it is difficult to get an undisturbed sample. In that case, what we have to do is the analysis, everything is based on only correlated data obtained from the field investigations. In hard ground conditions, the important field tests regularly carried out are, you are all aware of that one is a standard penetration test. And in India, Indian practice, the rarely pressure meter test. And coming to the standard penetration test, this is the not required uh, explanation because this test will be corrected at, uh, uh, at different intervals. That is, generally 1.5 meter interval test will be carried out. And uh, the the 63.5 kg hammer will be used and 75 centimeter fall will be used. The number of blows is considered as N value. So attempts have been made to correlate this N value with relative density of cohesions or cohesionless soil and uh, unconfined compressive strength of cohesive soils. These relations are used to arrive at the allowable bearing pressure of the soil. But while using the SVT values, uh, we should be cautious keeping in mind limitations of the test and its application. In general, the blow counts will be very 
widely, uh, uh, the factors which affect the SPT values is the weight of the hammer, height of the drop, pre-fall, eccentricity of the blows. So weight of hammer, every time the weight of the hammer, uh, every test is to be, uh, every time when you carry out, you have to check the weight of the hammer, that is 63.5 kg, and shall be checked before using. The change in weight will have influence on the blow count. And second is height of the drop. The drop shall be 75 centimeters and provide an indicator on the rod so that the height will be maintained. The important thing is the free fall. The free fall shall be, uh, shall be ensured the manual lifting of the hammer may lead to variation in fall in terms of height of the drop and may not be free fall. So uh, in uh, practice, the power winch operated machine shall be used to avoid errors in terms of free fall and height of fall. The another one is important thing is eccentricity of the blows. To avoid eccentricity of the eccentricity in application of the blows, a guide rod shall be used to avoid eccentricity. Yeah, so all these things, weight of the hammer, height of the drop, free fall and essences of the blows are main source of errors in blow count. In addition to these, the quality of driving shoes, whatever you use the shoe, generally it will be prone to bend and thereby um, leading to error values of SPT. Then the hydrostatic end also will have an influence on SPT value and the size of the connecting rod will have influence. The gravel content, the gravel content is higher it shows the more penetration resistance and thereby increase the SPT values. And the depth of boring is also important. And the overburden pressure is also one of the important source of errors in uh, ascertaining the, in arriving the SPT values. And it is necessary that errors resulting from variations in variable are kept in mind and the test is executed in a standard manner for proceeding with the corrections. So the, the corrections uh, uh, to the measured, uh, these are all things which are known everybody, knows everything. Uh, the why we are stressing is since the only these two parameters we are depending on mainly SPT because uh, to, to make the recommendations in hard ground conditions. So the main two corrections uh, uh, for the measured SPT values are the one is the dilatancy correction, the other one is overweight and correction. The dilatancy correction uh, is applied uh, for fine uh, or silty saturated sand with the SPT blow count is more than 15. This correction has been recommended by Tezagi and Peck in 1967, but n is equal to 15 plus n minus 15 by 2. So both n and n dash are corrected and actual blow count respectively. So coming to the overburden correction, this correction was applied only for positionless soils, whereas researchers have proposed the correction in different ways. Originally, the correction was uh, beginning, the, the correction was suggested by Gibbs and Holtz in 1957. The correction presented in this graph showing that, so effective vertical pressure versus correction of SPT values, positionless soil for over by then. Suppose if you take 1.7 grams per cc, and if you apply the correction, the vertical pressure will be one kg per centimeter square. One kg per centimeter square, if you take 1.7 grams per cc, at six meters depth, the effective stress is equal to one kg per centimeter square, and the correction is uh, one. Actually, the measured SPT value is equal to uh, the corrected SPT value. If the SPT value recorded will be more than six, uh, uh, up to six meters depth will be more, uh, and it will be less if the depth of testing is more than six meters. And uh, after extensive research work carried out by Professor Kempton, he realized that the corrections proposed by Gibbs and Holtz are far from reality. He published his research work on SPT processes and effects on sand and overburden pressure, relative density, particle size, aging, and over consolidation ratio in a paper published in Geotechnic in London in 1986. He also observed that the measured SPT values affected by many factors, that is, energy transmitted to the bottom of the borehole. So, type of SPT hammer, what we use type of release of hammer and overweight and pressure, the length of connecting rods, borehole diameter, type of sampler, etc. He suggested the following corrections. Skempton observed that 100% of energy imparted to the rod does not reach to the bottom of the borehole. 
He normalized the measured SPT values to standard rod energy ratio and suggested the following equation that is N60 is equal to N measured that is ER by 60. This ER by 60 ratio depends on the hammer and its release. As per the Indian practice, the ER by 60 is 0.9 for manual release as most of the practice is carried out in India. So he also suggested that the corrections for rod length type of sample or borehole diameter. So the rod length, if you take uh, the 10 meters rod, the correction will be one. And the rod length is lesser than 10 meter, the correction value will, of the length of the rod will be lesser. Finally, the range of correction, if you consider the minimum length of the rod will be 3.5 meters, and the correction varies from 0.8 to one. So third one is the, uh, Type of sampler. The sampler, the SPT sampler will come with liner and without liner. Suppose if you use with liner and the correction factor will be one and without liner it's 1.5. In Indian practice we use the sampler without liner. The another one is the correction factor for borehole diameter. For borehole diameter ranging from 65 to 150 the correction factor is one and 150 mm diameter borehole is 1.05. Generally, we carry out the, the SPT, uh, the borehole, advancing borehole in soil, the overweight in soil. Uh, generally, it's 150 mm diameter. And uh, there is the other strata, when we are getting a dense strata, and then we use tungsten carbide bits and diamond bits, which is generally an excess we use it, that is lesser than, uh, it is 65 mm diameter. So, con comparing all these uh, corrections, so C1, C2, and C3, rod length that is sampler and borehole diameter. So C1, C2, and C3, if you multiply 0 0.8 and 1.2 into 1.05, it is 1.008, which is uh, uh, very, uh, very negligible. Uh, for IS practice, the correction suggested by Skempton for rod length, type of sampler, and borehole diameter is very weak. From the above discussions, in the absence of approximate appropriate uh, corrections data, overburden correction can be neglected. And in other words, corrected value can be considered as observed value. However, correction for dilucency shall be applied to take care of saturation. The after SPT, this is the pressure meter test, the another test which we, which generally will be conducted in the borehole, uh, drilled borehole. Uh, the, the test schematic diagram is presented here. And uh, this test will be conducted in the drilled borehole at a specific interval. Uh, and the pressure is an in-situ testing, uh, the pressure matrix in in-situ testing method, which is commonly used to achieve quick and easy measure of in-situ stress strain relationship of soil, which provides uh, parameters uh, such as modulus of velocity. In principle, pressure meter test is performed by applying pressure to the side walls of the borehole and observing the corresponding deformation and thereby we'll get the modulus of velocity. The coming to the disadvantage, disadvantage, the test is excellent test. The advantage is that in the market, the probes are available uh, in three sizes to suit the standard borehole dimensions. And the capacity of the pressure meter also vary, it depends on the data what, where we are conducting the test. The higher the capacity of pressure meter, the cost will be more. We need higher capacity pressure meter in the measurement of capacity will be uh, will be arrived based on, uh, will be mentioned in terms of bars. For hard size, what we are discussing at present, we need a party bar pressure meter to conduct the test. So in the Indian market, the party bar pressure meter cost about 40 lakh rupees, hence that present only limited number of agencies having this facility in India, as it is used is very limited. In addition, the pressure meter testing is carried out after proper calibration of the instrument and shall be carried out by experienced person and to be analyzed by an expert geotechnical engineer. This test eliminates the collection of undisturbed samples and testing of soil samples in the laboratory. In case of hard ground conditions, what we are discussing at present, such as soft rock, weather rock, wherein no undisturbed sample can be obtained or wherein no penetration test can be used to estimate the allowable bearing pressure. In such situations, pressure meter tests conveniently used now, after the testing, these whatever the SPT values we are getting are 
the pressure metric test results. So mainly SPDA we are going to discuss here because this is the routinely carrying out the test in the geotechnical engineering practice. Particularly in the hard conditions, this is the only source of only input to, to, to use and correlate and arrive at the properties, correlated values, and it will be used in the analysis. So the, the correlations, when you come to the correlation of the properties from SPT values, so we have a granular soils and fine grain soils, that is the cohesiveness soil. So suppose if you take uh, the standard penetration blow count, so you have a range of SPT values. It depends on the standard penetration value. It will be the relative density uh, we can mention in the a, a very loose to dense to very dense state, depends on the uh, SPT value. And the relative density also varies. In this, in this, it is showing clearly that the approximate ang angle of internal friction is as the SPT values increases, the angle of shear resistance will increase. And uh, the, the values, whatever showing here, is about 30, 65, is the relative density and standard penetration low count is at 30. And the range of angle of internal friction is 35 to 40 degrees. And for 50 and value, generally 50 is the uh, so this is the point where uh, above 50 is a very dense state and uh, the, we will get a very high order of approximate uh, the angle of angular friction will be 38 to 45 degrees and relative density is 85 percent. And uh, this uh, range of values, SPT values, mainly the equations what we use is uh, the range of properties depends on the fines. If the fines content is, uh, is more than 5 percent, that means passing to 425 micron. If it's more than 5%, the pi is 25 degrees plus 0.15 relative density. If it is less than 5%, the angle of internal friction is 30 plus 0.15 times the relative density. And the same thing was presented in the form of uh, 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 standard penetration resistance versus angle of uh, uh, shearing resistance. Uh, that was uh, the, the, the line, continuous uh, line, and dotted line is shown. Dotted line is an extrapolated line up to this value, that is a uh, uh, dense data up to SPT value of 60. It is shown as a continuous line. This is an extrapolated line. We have to consider up to here, up to SPT value of 60. Because uh, from generally my experience, if anything SPT value is above 30, it is prone to disturb while, uh, while carrying out the SPT. So one has to consider that this is the only approach available to arrive at the angle of shearing resistance and up to a value of 60. So next, if it crosses uh, uh, the n value of 60 for soils where SPT value is more than 60, the cold and Stroud approach is there. 1976 years presented the scale of strengths and the n values of SPT for soil, soft rock, and weather rock. That is n value more than 60. Up to 60, the earlier equations can be used, the curves can be used, the equation can be used to arrive at the pi value. So here, once it crosses 60, the Cole and Stroud approach is very much useful uh, to get the strength of this data. So the Cole and Stroud has given uh, this table, uh, which has shown the soil here. Uh, this is up to SPT value of 60. Uh, the, it, is, it is considered to be soil. And the above 60, he has, uh, he has, he has classified it as uh, the soft or weather rock. So that the SPT values are showing here is more than 60, 80, 100, 200, 400, 800. So up to, up to 800 or 900 SPT value, uh, the, the, the shear strength is 40,000 kilonewton per meter square. So above SPT value, are, so if it is uh, around 1,000 or not, uh, it has shown as a sound draw because this will be discussed a bit later slide because the values so generally people will conduct uh, the SPT test and uh, stop the test at uh, the under the line. This, uh, this need bit explanation and that will be uh, discussed in the next slides. In addition to that, he has, uh, he has uh, classified the strength, uh, strength of consistency, strength of consistency uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, the shear strength uh, is uh, right from the weak to moderately weak, moderately strong and strong. And uh, he has uh, given grades of uh, grades to the rock, of weathered rock and hard rock. So uh, the, it ranges from, it's weathered rock only, that is EA to EM. 
ABCDF. And uh, uh, yeah, this we have to uh, we have to read uh, not only the SPT values. We have to physically see sample uh, how hard it is that to be uh, examined in for the, uh, for breakability point of view, penetration point of view, and if you scratch it, so and how it will be based on that only. Because we have the problem, we have soil mechanics, we have well defined uh, procedures are there for testing the soil. Uh, we can arrive on engineering properties like shear strength, uh, uh, volume, uh, volume, volume change properties and variability. But hard rock also we have all the properties we can arrive with. Clear test procedures are available. And whereas coming to the weathered rock and soft rock, various degrees of weathering, we have problems in assessing the strength since we cannot carry out any test. And we have to depend on the field test such as SPT. SPT is also not true reflection. This is the bottleneck what we have. And we have to understand the ground condition and in the experience we are making the recommendations, particularly in this zone. That's why this uh, presentation is concentrated mainly on hard ground conditions, mainly because the considering this data, the weather rock, soft rock, SPT values more than 60 and hard rock. The coal and stroud may be used for estimation of strength already discussed. The physical observation of strata of hard soil, soft rock, and weather rock. But as strength of hard soil can be arrived by conducting unconfined compressive strength at the laboratory. There's no problem in, in arriving at the strength in case of hard rock. The, now already I have mentioned here the, the SPT values, if it is more than 100, when penetration is less than 30 centimeters. We cannot go on hitting and uh, uh, get the SPT value because once some penetration is there, we can stop. And if the penetration is not much when it is jumping and uh, the hammer when, uh, when doing SPT. So up to 100 blows, one can test it and record what is the penetration. In such cases, coal and stout as recommended, uh, we have to leave the first 20 blows uh, to account the loose material and then find out the penetration of balance 100 blows. So this is how, uh, 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 based on that penetration, uh, we have to extrapolate the values and arrive at the standard penetration test. So here, uh, uh, the cold and stout we have presented here, the n value of soft rock, it ranges from 60. We have discussed uh, the value of 60 to arrive at the five. Beyond 60, it is uh, uh, considered as a um, soft rock and uh, uh, various degrees of weathering weather rock. And uh, the SPT values, the correlated SPT values and the extrapolated SPT values uh, uh, will link from 60 to, he has given up to 400. Up to 400 he has given. The shear strength he has given, that is uh, for an SPT value of 60, it is uh, uh, point, uh, point 0.4, uh, uh, megapascals and whereas at uh, uh, 400 SPT value uh, it is uh, 5 megapascals and uh, yeah uh, next coal and stout also classified uh, the rock based on the strength again and uh, this very weak rock suppose if you take it uh, uh, he has uh, uh, universal compressive strength is 80, 8 to 14 and weak rock is 14 to 40 uh, kg per centimeter square, moderately weak, and strong rock will be more than 400 kg per centimeter square. Yeah, now uh, that is cohesion soils. For cohesive soils, uh, this is the equation uh, proposed by, uh, given by Tazagi and Peck. Uh, this is up to n value of 30. He has given uh, n value of SPT, unconfined compressive strength. Uh, values because this can be arrived based on the laboratory testing by conducting UCC compressive strength. Once it crosses 30, so the equation proposed by uh, n by 7.5 kg per centimeter square can be used to arrive at the uh, unconfined compressive strength. Uh, it is to be remembered that here uh, the that the correlated properties shall be used in the analysis where undisturbed samples could not be retrieved. So nowadays, uh, generally people, the trend is uh, uh, not, uh, not following the uh, 
when the testing um, uh, will take considerable time and all. Uh, now people are using this SPT values and correlations only, but uh, the, the, the whenever wherever the possible undisturbed sample to be collected and tested it, and uh, if it process, uh, uh, if we cannot retrieve the sample and carry out the test, then only this correlated properties to be used from the field test. So once the data is arrived, we have to make uh, recommendations regarding foundations. So mainly we have uh, shadow foundations and deep foundations. Coming to shear criteria, which we have already discussed, uh, uh, made half uh, uh, approach, and uh, uh, and uh, when the values in the range of 30 to 50, uh, the very dense uh, when the SPT values are more than 50, uh, the allowable pressure and the least of both shear and settlement criteria. We arrive at the safe bearing capacity based on shear criteria. Uh, the bear of the equation that is 5 degrees is equal to 30 plus 0.15 and two density can be used. From the graph present by Peck at 1953, as shown in figure, this can be used to arrive at the bearing capacity factors that the NQM comma from SPT values. And uh, the, the, uh, the bearing pressure can be calculated, safe bearing pressure will be calculated based on these equations. Uh, using this uh, uh, bearing capacity factors. So for settlement criteria, it is to be collected undisturbed sample. Uh, it is uh, it is difficult to collect undisturbed sample in dense cohesion soil. IS 8009 part 1 196 gives ready-made comes from which settlement can be read out on given width of the foundations and SPT values. The curves presented in IS 8009 is the settlement in meters per unit pressure versus width of foundation uh, of a putting in meters for the various SPT values. You can see here the SPT value started from 5 from and it ends from 60 and 5, 10, 15 in the interval of 5, 35, 40, 50, up to 60 as we then. The settlement per unit pressure from standard penetration resistance. From this curves, uh, one can estimate the settlement, permissible settlement can be uh, kept and uh, the allowable bearing pressure uh, can be arrived by restricting the settlement for a given width of the foundation. So, in addition to corrections, uh, these corrections, the another correction is the groundwater table correction as given. Uh, the water table correction is too severe and it reduces the allowable pressure drastically. Later, Mayer have found that the approach the proposal by Tezargi and Pex gives higher values, high values of settlements. And the actual settlements will be 35% lower than the one proposed by Tazar and Pike. Hence, he suggested the following formula on SPT test. If the footing width is less than 1.25 meters, he has given the formula delta is equal to 1.6 q by n, and, uh, uh, and if it is uh, more than the width of the footing, if it is width of the footing is more than 1.25 meters, he has given another formula. To arrive at the uh, allowable soil pressure uh, and uh, the settlement, the settlement to be uh, fixed, and uh, the Q can be arrived with the SPT value. And as per the curves, uh, Tezagi and but the load carrying capacity of settlement can be, can be up to uh, SPT in value of 60. In this type of soils, dense to very dense collisionless soil, the allowable pressure is governed more by concentration of settlement rather than bearing failure. So once if it is SPT value process 60, the shear criteria is not an issue, the settlement criteria to be taken into account. So uh, this is the only input parameter is the SPT values. As the SPT values is increases, changing in depth, uh, because sometimes increase will be there, sometimes it depends on the constituents, sometimes with the depth also, if the seeds are going to be predominant, the SPT values reduction also will be there. So the sand and silt contents in Bangalore so mainly depends uh, uh, depends on the, the predominance uh, the SPT values because the same constituents if silt is predominant the yes, SPT values will be drastically reduced uh, in in our observations in Bangalore. So the SPT values to be considered up to influence zone. Uh, influence zone we have to give take the weighted average of SPT values. So this is the one which we follow uh, and it's the books also refers this. The n value is equal to 3 times n1 into 2n2 plus n3 by 3. The n1 is the SPT value at founding level. n2 is 1.5 times the 
width of the foundation and PL3 is two times the width of the foundation. So this approach can be uh, considered up to SPT and then you already discussed it's up to 60. Once the SPT value crosses 60, the coals and soil approach that in 1975 proposed shear strength value which was discussed in India to be used. And the same thing was referred in IS 2911 in 2010. Uh, uh, the extrapolated SP3 values since we are using here uh, with reference to breakability and shear strength values of rock according to the standard penetration test is classified as a weak, moderately weak, moderately strong and strong. So this is the table which was discussed earlier. So when we are here from this level for SVT value 62, 62 nearly in the 1000, in between 1000. So our SVT value, we can extrapolate up to here to here. And a uh, the, the lot of scope is there in judging um, because one has to see the samples and its breakability and its, uh, uh, its penetration and uh, its scratch resistance. All those things to be taken into account in uh, arriving at the, uh, uh, the, the shear strength of uh, weathered rock. So coming to the hard rock, the, the, uh, uh, this in brief already we have mentioned the, 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 the dense uh, SPT value of more than strict. We have the approach, uh, uh, the coal and stove approach to be used uh, in estimating. Coming to the hard rock, the same range pressures of rock can be estimated based on the, there are two ways of estimating. One is based on rock mass rating values, the other one is the shear strength of the rock. So to, to briefly, I would like to discuss about the rock mass rating. So uh, this is the approach uh, uh, suggested, this is one of the approaches we are having the allowable soil pressure. So this rock mass rating, we have uh, six factors to be taken into account at the rock mass rating. That is one is uniaxial compression strength of the rock. So the rock quality designation uh, and the spacing, uh, spacing of discontinuities, condition of discontinuities, the groundwater table, and variation of orientation of the discontinuities. These two first two are uh, the laboratory testing. Uh, the first one is the laboratory testing. Second one is the, uh, is the length of the course retrieved, depends on the core recovery and RQD. And the, the other four are uh, the, based on the physical observation of the sample and site observations like water table and other things. So based on these UCS value and norm, the rating has given. So the rating already discussed. These ratings to be added, all the ratings to be added, finding, finally we'll arrive at the RMR value. So if RMR value is 100 to 81, it is a very good drop. And uh, it's a good if it is 8 to 60, and uh, like that, uh, very poor when it is 0 to 20. So if you look at the uh, the, the the bearing pressure, the, the uh, not bearing pressure here, say bearing pressure. If you take it here, is a very poor rock. If you take it, it is only ranging from 40 to 55 tons per square meter. It's a very low value. Suppose if you are not getting any uh, any any course or any um, any poor recovery if the SPT values are very high and uh, if you are getting rebound and you are forced to restrict the value by 40 using this approach. So uh, based on again uh, this I will discuss with the case study with uh, uh, one of the projects uh, which we have uh, uh, reviewed the geotechnical review we have, uh, we have carried out um, and uh, for that uh, the the RMR values, the residual this RMR values, I will explain next slide. So the same bearing capacity of sound rock, we already discussed, it's, uh, it's the QES, that is as per ISO, the same bearing capacity of the rock should be estimated from QS is equal to Q0 into NS. This is the empirical question, depends on the spacing of discontinuities. Again, we have to see what is the core recovery, what is the, what is the discontinuities. That is here, Q0 is the average uniaxial compressive strength of the rock, and QS is the same bearing pressure. Yeah, if N, NF value to be arrived based on this formula, that is, uh, uh, that is 3 plus S by BF, that is, uh, this is the formula, and uh, the uh, S is the spacing uh, of discontinuities, uh, BF is the put, uh, uh, putting width, 
and uh, uh, delta is the thickness of this uh, discontinuity. This, this formula, if you substitute, we will get uh, uh, mainly it depends on the spacing of discontinuities. So suppose if you see that the discontinuous spacing is 300 centimeters, the correction back, the multiplication back is 0.4, and if it is at 3200 in that range, it is 0.1. This is nothing but a factor of safety. This is uh, uh, this is a when it is from this what we can understand in the absence of any uh, data, the spacing and discontinuities. So if you consider the closely spaced discontinuities, closely spaced joint drop, the the the, the multiplication factor is 0.1. That is nothing but a factor of safety of 10 to be taken into account if you are considering uh, if you are considering uniaxial compressive strength and closely joint at rock, uh, we have to apply this factor of safety of 10, that is 0.1 uh, multiplication factor. So this is one of the projects which we which we reviewed, not uh, uh, not carried out the investigation in Hyderabad. So the Hyderabad, you know that its data is uh, very hard and uh, the, the, the overburden soil is very less uh, and it's followed by immediately rocky strata. And we have a core recovery and RQD and the good core recovery and RQD. So they have these people have done about 10 bore holes and uh, the core recovery, if you see that 80, 93 in that range, it's, uh, it's about 80% most of the cases. The RQD is also very high. And if you see the compressive strength, the water absorption and porosity, the porosity is almost 1% uh, one, one porosity and water absorption also see that it's almost less than 1%. That shows the denseness of this data, denseness of the rock. And uh, UCC strength, if you see, that is from in the range of that's the 900 plus 900, 900, the minimum is 900 plus is kg per centimeter square. That is uh, 9,000 tons per square meter. So based on RMR value, uh, it is reported that the based on the strength, RQD values, spacing and discontinuities, he has given the rating. Finally, based on the observations, we are getting very lesser value and is classified as a poor rock as per the data. And the RMR range is 21 to 40. And the range of allowable bearing pressure given is for this RMR value is 58 and 145. Finally recommended 75 tons per square meter on hard rock, which is the, the uniaxial compressive strength is 9,000 tons per square meter. This is one of the drawbacks. Sometimes the RMR values is tend to uh, give a lower uh, bearing pressures. Uh, sometimes it will be as low as 40 also sometimes when you don't get it. Suppose if you depend on that, sometimes for high-rise buildings, it is difficult to accommodate, uh, the, difficult to recommend open foundation uh, for such kind of situations. For high-rise buildings, such as 25 at a close building, the lower values, uh, whatever the 40 and all given by RMR when you approach it, uh, is difficult to accommodate the loads. So uh, the other one is the UCS uh, rock course. Uh, based on uh, whatever the tests we have conducted, they are shown that ranges from 7650 to 9800 tons per square meter. Uh, the core recovery is good, 70 to 93 percent, and the safe bearing pressure of, if you consider the least value of 760, uh, 7650 tons per square meter, the, if you apply you close the joint at all. So that is factor safety of 10 or multiplication factor 0.1 it comes down to 765 tons per square meter is arrived after okay, applying a factor of safety of 10 and least compressive strength in the country. So the another parameter, this is the bearing pressure. Uh, we have the coal and straw approach. We have uh, the curves, ready-made curves are given uh, in the codes. We can arrive at the, uh, we can arrive at the uh, bearing pressures if the SPT values are more than 60 and weather rocks and extrapolated values to be used in the coal and stone approach. The another important parameter in the design of open foundation is the modulus of subgrade reaction. The modulus of subgrade reaction, which the definition is uh, very simple to see, that is the load per unit settlement, which is, uh, which is defined as the modulus of subgrade reaction. Uh, we, are, we are well aware of that to arrive at how to arrive the modulus of subgrade reaction. The subgrade reaction can be arrived based on uh, modulus, modulus of subgrade reaction based on C by size, the triaxial test strength data uh, to be used, triaxial uh, shear strength test will be used uh, to arrive at the modulus of subgrade reaction. And for clay soils, we have to use the consolidation test data 
that is main parameter is the coefficient of volume of this voltage that is the mv so the other way now we are discussing about uh, the hard ground conditions since we cannot conduct any traction test or any any consolidation test for this hard ground conditions uh, uh, we have to depend on the field test the first approach is the plate load test plate load test uh, uh, it can be conducted to arrive at the modulus of separate reaction. Generally, 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter will be used, and the pressure corresponding it will be loaded to 1.75 mm settlement. And the pressure corresponding to settlement of 1.25 mm is taken as the K value, and the the and it depends on the footing size. The correction can be applied. So alternatively, we have uh, already discussed that mainly we are depending on the SPT values and extra plated SPT values. So uh, the alternative approach is IS2950 part 1, 1981 has given this table, uh, modulus of subgrade reaction for cohesion as soil. So and cohesive soil has given. And uh, the, the values depends on the, again, relative density, loose, medium, and dense. And the standard penetration values have again. He has a dense strata 30 and over. He has given as dense strata. And again, the conditions are two conditions are available that is dry and moist state and submerged state. And water table, when your foundation is resting below water table, and you have to use the submerged state. And if it is above water table, you have to use dry and moist state. And uh, this value is uh, for a plate size of 30 per centimeter by 30 centimeter. And again, it has to be. Uh, corrected to the actual footing weight value. And similarly, for cohesive soils, also as given. The in between values here to you, you can use, you can extrapolate the value and, uh, and proportionally you can, uh, you can calculate the intermediate SPT values. So now this is the shallow foundations. We can arrive at the allowable bearing pressure of all the materials. Uh, so uh, right from hard, for uh, hard ground conditions, which are used. Uh, the SPT values are the important value uh, we have used to arrive at the same bearing pressure. So, second thing is the pile foundations. So, since it's a dash subject, we are uh, pile foundations. We are we are uh, discussing only board cast institute piles, board cast institute and bearing piles. Uh, uh, that is uh, the soft rock, weathered rock, and hard rock. So, this is the practice what we are we are following. Just only I am highlighting here. Uh, just what I understand uh, uh, and what I follow here are presented here by foundations. Uh, the board casting piles are considered in this, terminated in hard ground because the topic of presentation is hard ground conditions. Uh, in this, uh, we, I am going to discuss three topics that is the load carrying capacity, the socketing length. These two are important uh, for the, in the recommendation stage. The third stage is the termination criteria. We have to mention the termination criteria. Uh, but this will be useful uh, during execution. So uh, the load carrying capacity is if you uh, if you uh, take the formula, so we have hand bearing and bond strength. So all this discussion I have uh, not touched about the uh, the frictional uh, friction in the uh, along the pile shaft uh, and more metal region. Only I have considered the uh, end bearing and uh, the resistance uh, that is load carrying capacity of the socket portion, socket portion of the hard strata. Uh, I have not considered anything uh, uh, above uh, the, uh, the screen friction uh, in the overweight condition. That is uh, uh, this formula, whatever I have used, QAP, is the shear strength uh, of the rock flow. This is the portion is the, the end bearing, and this is the bond strength, the bond strength. Here the the end bearing is Cu into Nc by Fs into cross section area of the pile, and uh, this is the socket length. Pi d is the length is the socket length. So pi d alpha a Cu into Fs. For uh, generally, this, this Nc is the bearing pressure, bearing capacity factor, so to be taken as nine, and uh, the factor of safety taken as three, and uh, the the recommended value is alpha by Fs is equal to 0.3. L is the length of the socket. This is the socket length part, and this is the end bearing part. The Cu is the average shear strength of rock adjacent to the shaft of the socket length. Already, this is suppose load carrying capacity pi from end bearing, the first component. I'm, I'm discussing here the first component. Cu into Nc by Fs pi d squared by 4. Already, I have discussed the Nc is 9, 
and C U is the strength and factor safety of three, the pi d square if you substitute it. Finally, this load carrying capacity, the contribution from the end bearing, the bottom that is equal to three times C U into cross section area. It is well known that load carrying of the pile will be smaller of the two following. We are aware of it. One is the structural capacity of the pile, and the second one is the supported support provided by the surrounding and underlying soil or rock. The minimum of the two is the load carrying capacity of the pile. So coming to the structural capacity of the pile can be calculated using this formula. The structural capacity is 0.25 FC, FCK into cross sectional area of the pile. If you substitute it, and uh, we are all aware of that, uh, for piling, the minimum gain of concrete nowadays is M25. Earlier it was M20. Now, uh, when the structural concrete, when they made it uh, M15 to M20 minimum, now it is M25 concrete. For M25 grade of concrete, the structural capacity of the pile is that is 600 into cross section area of the pile. We have 600 into cross section area of the pile is the structural capacity for M25 grade of concrete. From the soil support, if you take it, the load carrying capacity pile after neglecting skin friction and load, car load carrying component from bond strength along socket length, three times CU into cross section area. Suppose uh, if we equating the equations may, the three times CU is equal to 600 tons per square meter. So now we use the input parameter was only CU. The CU, uh, where we will get, this is the cone and stroud approach. The corrected value of CU with the N value for a minimum value of 200, the SVT value of 200. Again, this is an extrapolated value. The shear strength will be 200 tons per square meter. From the above, it is clear that the load carrying capacity of the board cast its own and bearing pile will be equivalent to the structural capacity when the extrapolated values are more than 200. Since the weather rock and hard rock will have a more strength than very dense in design with nil core recovery and RQD, neglecting skin friction along the shaft and load carrying capacity is derived from the bond strength. Otherwise, other words, the load carrying capacity of the board casting suit pile rested on refusal strata. Refusal strata, where n values are more than two, uh, more than or equal to less than or equal to 200 or weather rock or hard rock will be governed by the structural capacity equivalent to M25 grade of concrete. The, the second one is the socketing depth, which is an important thing. The socketing depth, uh, that is the load carrying capacity, the SPT values are, if it is a 200 and above, the, the load carrying capacity is governed by the structural capacity. And the socket length, and coming to the socket length, uh, there are several approaches. The one is socket length is based on purely on local experience. The load carrying capacity is uh, uh, socket length. The load carrying capacity is derived from the bond between the concrete and rock. So the, the any one of the approach to be used, the load carrying capacity derived from both point resistance and bond strength between the concrete and rock. And load carrying capacity is assumed to derive purely on end bearing. Considering these factors, uh, socket length will be decided. This I need to explain a little bit about this. Socket length is based on purely on local experience. In general, when board casting surfaces are socketed into weather rock, the socket length is typically varying from one to three times the diameter of the pile. If it is a hard rock, it is loaded to the structural capacity. It is general practice to provide 150 mm. So the suppose socketing length, if you consider the, the, the load carrying capacity derived between uh, bond between the concrete and rock, so only if you consider, if you don't consider the end bearing, so we, when the socket length of the pile is derived from the bond uh, thing, that is the formula QCA into AS into area of surface area by FS. So, so in the case of uniform mobilization of bond in this case uh, is possible only for modulus of elastic both concrete and surrounding rock are of the same magnitude. So in case of weather rock, if you consider the modulus of elasticity of weather rock is far lower than that of concrete. Also, the bond strength depends on the wall of socket. Hence, care shall be taken in selecting appropriate value of bond strength between the concrete and wall of the socket. Suppose if you consider the, the already the load carrying capacity equation. So the load carrying capacity, both point resistance, bond strength between the concrete, this which was already discussed, 
the bearing capacity factor 9 alpha a by t point recommended value on those things in the earlier slides suppose if you consider the prime diameter of ranging from 500 mm to 600 800 1000 this is the normal size of the piles which we use in the practice the concrete grade m25 and the safe load with the nominal steel of 4% these are the load carrying capacity this is a structural capacity of concrete so this is cross sectional area this is nothing but into 600 tons per square meter so to to uh, get to the this was already discussed at 200 spt vacuum 200 spt value is equal to the structural capacity suppose in hard ground conditions we have values from right from 60 this n value is 60 if the uh, if the strata is 60 n value to get to this structural capacity we need to socket it to 10.66 meters so that it is equal to structural capacity and bearing component and the structural capacity is if you if you socket it to 10.66 meters if n value are 60 it is equal to structural like that if you take 100 and uh, the uh, shear strength is 700 kN per meter square and the socket length is 4.5 meters so like that if you start increasing the spt value and the strength increases and when it touches 200 and uh, the load carrying capacity the socket length is uh, that part is not required and uh, it is equal to the structural capacity the penetration weather law what i discussed here and the above calculations uh, based on pile being loaded to safe structural capacity of m25 grade of concrete with a nominal reinforcement of 4% while calculating load carrying capacity which is equal to the structural capacity end bearing and friction socket is only considered and no other wooden friction is taken into account in from the above table it is to be noted that the piles with nominal reinforcement no socketing is required in this integrated rock with spt and values more than 1.5 to 200 theoretically this is what i am talking about theoretically however it is opened that the theoretical no theoretically no uh, the no socketing is required for piles testing on strata where spt values are more than 200 it is considered a minimum of 1d to ensure the bearing strength In addition, the socket length is also depends on the property of overbed design and its consist uh, consistency. So now the pile determination criteria. Now we have discussed the load carrying capacity of the piles uh, in hard ground conditions. Um, that is, n value of right from sixty to sixty to four or sixty to one thousand. Uh, which is extrapolated values uh, and uh, the load carrying capacity uh, how much softening is required to get to the maximum value of load carrying capacity the last point is uh, in the piles which is the pile determination criteria so in the uh, in the reports we have to mention uh, what is the uh, our determination criteria to be followed uh, during execution for the quality control point of view uh, here all the discussions are based on spt values and spt values is given weight as uh, in calculations and all if we carry out spt test the pile bore so once uh, uh, if you test the pile that is an ultimate thing and one can be carry out the test at uh, uh, at the at the pile boring uh, once if you remove it and ensure the uh, bearing strata by conducting spt and uh, uh, and lower the case and pour the concrete so the another approach is uh, proposed by mr ganpule of uh, in 2005 that is pile penetration ratio so the pile penetration ratio uh, to be calculated based on spt value again uh, that is 0.747 by n this is the units are the ton meter per meter square per centimeter of penetration so in case of we have uh, the two modes of uh, uh, executing the pile foundations one is using rotary drilling the other one is the percussion method that is pile penetration ratio once you estimate it and uh, all the rotary rigs will have a, a torque uh, measuring device and uh, the how much torque we have applied what is uh, based on this input uh, uh, data 2 pi r naught t into t by the area of the pile p is the penetration achieved with a particular torque particular torque so this to be equated to ppr value and for the torque what is the penetration to be estimated 
and thus that criteria to be called, uh, followed uh, in uh, uh, in termination of the file. The another way is the chiseling uh, approach, adopt, uh, chiseling criteria to be followed in the case of uh, percussion bending weight. That again, PPR to be calculated to be to be equated to the weight of uh, chisel, the height of the drop, and number of blows you have applied with a fall of edge, the area of cross section, and penetration in centimeters. With this, uh, uh, once uh, the, the PPR value knows and the chiseling criteria is established for that kind of strata, so the same criteria to be follow, followed in other files, uh, which is uh, uh, once if you that uh, that criteria is following and automatically you are ensuring the files are terminating and the uh, strata mentioned uh, in the uh, reports. With this, uh, I would like to conclude uh, the presentation. Uh, in, in case of hard soil conditions, the analysis is to be depends on correlated data from the field test. Since the SPTN values are extrapolated values, with caution to be used for estimation of strength. In all the cases where cores are not retrieved or samples could not be collected, it is preferable to examine the proposed foundings data after excavation as the samples are not physically seen when recommendations are. Right from refusal strata where SPT values cannot be, suppose sometimes we will get a, a small sample of uh, soil at the shoe, maybe very little soil. That is also very, very much useful for a, uh, for a geotechnical engineer to make the recommendation. At least physically you can see the little soil. At some places we don't get even a small penetration also. So there's 100% rebound. And sometimes we don't get any sample, any core or anything. Just blindly, we, we, are, we are depending on only SPT blow count. And uh, uh, once that kind of situation is there, after recommendations, even though recommendations made, uh, after excavation, before, uh, uh, before putting PCC, uh, the, the, the geotechnical engineer uh, who made the recommendations has to examine this data and ensure this data, the founding data, whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever our observations we are we used to review so many reports that some consultants are used as the restriction of bearing capacity values in case of open conditions. Even though calculations permit higher values, sometimes the restriction is so severe they restrict so much lower values when the kind of construction is going on in Bangalore, the, uh, the, the number of floors and the high-rise buildings, it is sometimes finding difficult to accommodate the bearing pressures recommended by them. And in that case, we have to force to increase the values, the, the recommendations made by the consultant. In this process for high-rise buildings, the restricted bearing pressures are not enough to accommodate the loads coming onto the foundations from the superstructure. So another point is already discussed is one of the points that are mainly stressed is that the whole casting situ piles. The piles can be loaded to structural capacity where the piles are terminated in refusal strata. That is when is core recovery is zero, RQD both are zero, that is nil, in terms of extrapolated values are more than 200. So we need not retrieve any cores, but the SPT values are showing 200 and more, and uh, the, the, the load carrying capacity is governed by the structural capacity, which is the maximum value one can load a pile uh, to its maximum possible extent. With this, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, the Indian Geotechnical Society. Uh, uh, Bangalore chapter for uh, giving me the opportunity to to deliver this uh, 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 Ramaya Memorial Lecture uh, and I thank you uh, uh, the organizing committee for giving me an opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. For, uh, Dr. Raju, kindly unshare the screen, sir. <laughs> okay, now uh, we will post the Google Forms for all the participants. Kindly fill up the Google Forms. You will have the copy of this presentation. And since this is a memorial lecture, we will not have uh, any Q&A sessions. Now I request our uh, chapter colleague uh, and secretary in IGS Bangalore chapter, Professor Anbalgan, to propose the vote of thanks. Good evening to all of you. So uh, I am very happy that we could be able to finally conduct the BKR memorial lecture so successfully on team. So I thank our chief guest, uh, uh, Professor Anandram Swami, chairman of the department. 
to facilitate this and uh, participated in this and also i thank ids president professor shivakumar babu so and moreover i congratulate as well as appreciate professor uh, dr raju okay so i spend a lot of time on field so he has brought out the very important issues like so how the n values are really used in the field how it is important okay so what to, he also put forth a lot of uh, opportunity for the research so which is very difficult generally academician get exposed so in that way i will congratulate also also thank him i also thank all our uh, igs bangalore chapter executive committee members so who are actively participated and also attendees so we are close to about 120 participants so it was a good number so even though physically we will have generally 50 plus in the bk ramaya so this was uh, almost a double so i also thank uh, dr parth sarathi and his team so who has spent enough time on organizing this event so i thank you one and all so generally we serve hot uh, masala dosa during this time so uh, now i hope everybody can have your warm food and enjoy and be safe so thank you very much yeah so thank you professor anbalgan i think with this thank you can... all yeah thank you professor thank uh, thank you gls and with this uh, we will conclude today's uh, session and i wish all of you stay safe and stay healthy thank you very much sir thank you very much bye 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 bye